A man wakes in a car after having been involved in an accident. He can see the state that he is in through the reflection in the mirror. He can see a body on the ground outside and breaks down in tears. In his pocket, he finds some coins and a small piece of paper that he unfolds. As he looks in the back seat, he notices that there is an unconscious passenger. He states that he's losing his mind. The protagonist then notices a green mint on the floor and is ravenous, but is unable to reach it. He breaks into the glove box where he discovers a flashlight and two matches. As night falls, he switches on the headlights to try to attract attention. He also turns on the radio. It plays some old-fashioned music, but this offers him very little in the way of comfort. It rains overnight and he collects rainwater in the ashtray to drink. At first, he enjoys the rain on his face, but eventually he gets cold and struggles to put on a jacket in order to keep warm. He wakes the next morning needing the bathroom, so he has to go where he is. He is still unable to get out, which makes him more frustrated. He notices that the glass in the wing mirror is broken, so he removes it and looks behind at the dead passenger. He removes the passenger's wallet and takes out his ID. The guy's name was George Weaver, and the man asked if they were friends and what they are doing there. As the day turns into night, the man thinks he can hear something. He uses the flashlight to peer into the darkness, but can see nothing. By morning, he has carved the word hello into the leather on the dashboard. He doesn't notice a movement outside. He finishes carving my name is, but doesn't complete the sentence. Later, he has another attempt at getting the mint, but instead discovers a revolver under the seat. It is loaded with bullets. He can hear a noise and a figure comes into view. He calls out to the stranger and she climbs down. He is relieved to see somebody at last. She tells him to calm down and gives him some food and drink. He starts to cry and she tells him that everything will be okay. But it was just a dream. He is still in the car, hungry and thirsty. At night, he can see someone watching from afar, but they don't come down to help. He can also see a wild cat eating the dead body outside. He fires a shot to scare it away. He hallucinates about the woman again, but this time she is in the driver's seat of the car. However, the vision soon vanishes. Soon, the man resorts to eating insects that he finds in the car. Finally, his struggles enable him to open the door and he can pull himself out of the car, although obviously causing him a great deal of pain. Outside, he sees a dog and calls for help before passing out. Sometime later, he regains consciousness. He examines his injured leg and cries at what he sees. Checking the car again, he takes the revolver and finds a credit card with the name Raymond Plazzi on it. The hallucinated woman in the driver's seat tells him that is him. The man goes on to make a splint for his leg. On the radio, he hears a report that Raymond, George, and another man named Eric are wanted in connection with a bank robbery. He crawls round back of the car and finds bags stuffed with cash in the trunk. The man sits there for some time contemplating his next move before trying to climb up the hillside outside. While he rests, he sees a man come to the car who takes all the bags of cash. The man asks for help, but when he gets no response, he points the revolver at him. The other man takes out a shotgun, pointing it at the man before he turns and runs away. The man returns to the car to find that there is still a bag of cash there. He has a quick flashback concerning the woman. The dog approaches, but as the man calls it, it just stares at him. That night, the man burns the cash to keep warm and finally eats the mint. He continues to hallucinate about the woman and thinks that she was the bank teller during the robbery. The wildcat returns during the night and drags George's body out of the car. In the morning, the man strengthens his splint. The woman appears again and watches him struggle away. The dog appears to be leading him in the right direction, although he finds fresh boot prints in the earth. He carries on crawling through the woods before experiencing another hallucination. He can hear voices and screams and has flashbacks of the robbery. He yells out for the noise to stop. As he continues to crawl, he finds a bag containing painkillers, which he takes, as well as some food and drink. The dog approaches and the man shares the food with it. He later finds some money in the leaves and as he searches around, he also discovers a mobile phone that has been discarded in the hollow beneath a tree. It still works, but there is no signal. In the same hollow, he finds some bones in another dead body. He hurriedly crawls away, and outside, it starts to rain. Once the rain has passed, the painkillers have started to work, and he is able to walk somewhat. He makes his way to the river, where he and the dog drink thirstily. After a snack of worms, he and the dog play a game. The man can see the woman watching them again. 
Afterwards, the man tries to cross the river, but disaster strikes as he is swept away by the water into the rapids. Eventually, he arrives in a calmer stretch of water and is able to pull himself ashore on a tree root. He is still clutching the mobile phone, which no longer seems to work. As he crawls onwards and upwards, night falls and he finds shelter from the rain. In the distance, he can hear dogs barking and flashlights shining. He calls out, but they don't hear. He points the revolver with the aim of shooting to attract attention, but the woman appears in front of him. He doesn't shoot, but she and the others all disappear as he shouts, Come and get me. I don't care. The next morning, the dog has found him and wakes him with a lick to the face. The dog sets off and the man tries to follow. During the day, he takes more painkillers to ease his suffering. Finally, he is able to climb up a steep ravine, but he suddenly finds the wreckage of a car that he left some days previously. He breaks down before returning to the car. The woman emerges from the trees and runs her hands through his hair. He tells her to go away and they struggle in the undergrowth. He puts his hand around her neck until she almost passes out. Then he holds the revolver to her head and shoots. It is, of course, all a hallucination. Later, as he sits in silence, apart from the rain, he resolves to leave again. After another night sheltering from the rain, he realizes that the painkillers are finished. His hands are all bruised and scratched from the climbing through the undergrowth, so he covers them somewhat and continues to climb upwards. He starts talking to himself, saying that this was a stupid thing to do. He eventually collapses to the ground. The sunlight shines on his face and his eyes roll back. In his delirious state, he looks up to the blue sky. Suddenly, he is aware that the dog is nearby, barking at him. It runs off and he crawls in the same direction. In the distance, the man spots the wildcat approaching. He climbs over a ridge and then looks back to see if the beast is following. Fortunately, it had stayed away, but the man has found himself on a man-made track. He starts to make his way along this road before he finds a dead body clutching a bag. The man checks the pockets and finds his ID. This is Raymond Plazzi. He has mixed emotions and starts to have flashbacks. He is outside the bank witnessing the robbery. Then he is in the car having an argument with the woman that he has been hallucinating about all this time. He walks out of a shop and sees the woman sitting on a bench drinking coffee. Suddenly the alarm sounds from the bank and three armed men emerge. They shoot at the security guard but the man finds himself blocking their escape route. The woman is stunned by the gunshot. The man is bundled into the car and as he is driven away the woman starts to run after them. The wildcat appears again but the man pushes Raymond's dead body towards it. The cat takes the body and drags it down the side of the road. As the sun sets the man tries the mobile phone again and miraculously it works. He dials the sheriff's office and soon after he is picked up and helped into their truck. Before they leave, the man asks for the dog, but the sheriff tells him that there is no dog. As they drive away, the man fastens his seatbelt and starts to remember some more. He is in the car with the bank robbers. He fastens his seatbelt. One of the robbers is holding a gun to his head. Suddenly, the man reaches for the steering wheel and swerves the car off the road. The man now remembers what happened and sits in silence as he is driven home. If you want to watch more on movie shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.